Konnichiwa, minasan. Zeta's tier of Magic Dream Creations, and I've got Nocturnal Nerds podcast again. I know it's been a while, but I have my good friend Jen here. Say hi, Jen. Hi. <laughs> we are going to nerd out on some Shadow Hunters, and this was all her idea. This is all her fault. I was dragged into this. I don't even want to hear it. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so the podcast part was my idea, but it was her idea to get me into the fandom, so... We're kind of both at fault Nobody here. Nobody held a gun to your <laughs> head. Just saying. Mm -hmm. In the background, she did. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, so Shadow Hunters, if y'all don't know, like, Mortal Instruments, there was a movie, which we are not going to talk about the movie. There was the book series by Cassandra Clare. We're not going to talk about the book series because neither one of us has really read the book series. I've seen the movie. I don't remember if you've seen the movie. Have you seen the movie? No, but thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate oh, it. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> See? In my defense, I have looked somewhat into the books, and I am going to be listening to them. But, as she said, we are just here to talk about the show specifically today. Yes. Tonight. This way, you know, we, we don't do the whole, well, this happened in the books, and this didn't happen, and this happened in the movies, this didn't happen. That's not going to happen. I can, we could cover movie and books at a later time. We're just going to talk about the epicness that is the TV, the TV series. What? If I can talk. I could have swung just a tiramisu and I was like, now I'm hungry. Tiramisu, yeah. Tiramisu for everybody. I have watched too much TMT. Anyway, <laughs> so we're going to go off on, you know, the, the, the whole synopsis of the series is... Do you want to take over this one, or do you want me to, to give it oh, a good... Oh, yeah, you're doing so beautifully. Go oh, ahead. gee, thanks. <laughs> um, Did I mention the podcast was her idea? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh -huh. Yeah. So the, the whole premise of the series is they're basically... The, our world is not what we think it is. And we have demons and werewolves and vampires, not zombies, surprisingly. But they're kind of is zombie esque creatures in that series, I, I will yeah. say that, especially when you start mixing in the blood, you get zombies. I don't care what anyone else says; they're zombies. They're called Forsaken in the series, but yeah, okay. Well, and wow, they're called Forsaken, and they're zombies. <laughs> okay. You're getting into another fandom now. Zombies I always do. <laughs> Reference points, yes. Anyway, so and, and you got fairies. Um, You've also got angels and Nephilim, which is a term that's not really used a whole lot in a lot of different fandoms, but the whole you've got angel blood in you, and they're, they're, the Nephilim are also called Shadow Hunters. That's Shadow Hunters. That's the title. And it basically follows a uh, mortal girl who ends up getting thrown into this world, of, hey, you're actually a shadow hunter, by the way, and a lot of crap is going on, and yeah, it, it's craziness, it is epicness, that's all I can really sum up with that one. There's a whole bunch of... Door. It's awesome, and we're done. Good night, everybody! <laughs> yeah, no, you wish. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, definitely highly recommend you guys, if you have not watched it, go watch it, catch up, dear God. This is all like season two, right? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> My brain is going for, 20 million miles a minute. For everyone's information, you can currently watch season one on the Freeform website or the app for free. There are advertisements, but it is free. Season two is not free, but you can actually find it on Hulu on Freeform if you have a cable uh, subscription, and you can also buy it off of Amazon. There you go. So... If you guys want want to watch it, go towards those areas. Go watch it, catch up. It is epicness, um, and the the it's really cool because the cast actually they do a lot of 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 um, like Snapchat and they're very social media friendly. Yes, highly. You, you get to see them almost constantly, and they're interacting with their fans, and it is really cool whenever the cast and everybody does that um i i'm i'm going to lead this off with with questions and we're both going to answer them but you get to answer first 
She sounds like she's threatening me. Does anybody does anybody else hear the threat in her voice? I'm just saying. <laughs> it's not threatening. I'm not threatening. Okay, uh-huh. maybe I am a little bit. So I let her little innocent voice fool anybody because it's a bunch of uh do you curse on this channel? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do actually. Well, it's I'm not going to it's, it, a bunch of crap. it's an uncensored podcast. That's that's the fun thing about it. I'm still not gonna curse. <laughs> uh huh. But Let's see here. All right, so the first one. Also, please excuse any barking you may hear. My dog is a nut. Yes. We are very, very, very friendly with animals, and they bark a lot on this channel. I'm pretty sure people have heard Evie and her deep barking a lot. This one's more of a whiny, but that's because I have a Pomeranian, so. No. Your poor pom-pom. So who, okay, who, who is your favorite character? You can't ask that question. <laughs> yes, I can. And I just you did. Can't, you can't I ask just did. that question. Who okay, is your favorite? I will, I, will, I will very willingly answer Now, you can't question. go into couples because that's another question. That's not fair. Anyway, yes, it is. I will, well, okay, I will answer that question. I will answer that question as long as you answer it first. I have to answer. Okay, favorite character. Uh, yeah, see, it's not as easy as it is, huh? I didn't think so. No, you can. I didn't think so. <laughs> Yeah, now you Fancy. can't have Fancy. two characters. I will give you that. You you can have you can have you dual just said characters. Who's your favorite character? I said not. Yeah, character. But you, you, if you have multiple characters, you can do that. You're just twisting the question around now. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm trying to do it. Do, 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 do. I have two favorite characters, and they're not a couple. I'm just saying, <laughs> don't do a couple because couples is another question. <sighs> Fine, whatever. Okay, go ahead. But my, my favorite characters, because I can't pick between the two, dang mm-hmm. it, is uh, Jason Meliorn. Oh, I should have known the second one. Why didn't I think of that? You're always <laughs> talking about him. Exactly. <laughs> Just in case nobody knows, he's only had a couple appearances in the actual <laughs> show, but they have been awesome appearances. So I think he was in two episodes in the first season and in two episodes in the second season. Yes. Jade does a really, really good Meliorn. He does, I mean, and he is also, I mean, we mentioned the social media, media friendliness, but I mean, he is like... And he's an awesome artist, too. Ah. Just discovered today, she just discovered today that he's an artist, so... Fangirl, fangirl, all over. Yeah, no, Meliorn you and mean, Jace are... You mean nerdiness? Very much nerdiness on that one. And Dom, and Dom does a really good Jace. He really does. I mean, we can... We can um, uh, we'll talk more about the actual actors and like. Yeah, we'll but see. as far as like the characters themselves, I really like Jace because he's really uber cocky. Oh, there's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, but that is his. That his is his big thing. Is he's the cocky one. He is very full of himself. Loves himself. Up oh, until in case he meets... nobody knows, in case nobody knows, uh, Z over here, she actually happens to like cocky characters. Wow. I, I know, know, right? <clears throat> Maybe. I, mean, I see. I've, I honestly, I can see a trend in all my favorite characters. Really badly, cocky, mm-hmm. yeah, arrogant. Different characters. Thank you very much. Most of them redheads. Most. I suppose. Okay. <laughs> uh, but we, no, with Meliorn, I really liked him. Cause I really liked the whole Fay idea, Seely, Court, all that fun jazz. Really like the blue hair extensions because that is really cool. But I also, I also have uh, like the uh, armor. The armor was really badass. In case nobody's caught up with the second season, he wears armor in the second season. Yes, yes, and that it, it is. Seriously, if you have not watched the show, you probably shouldn't listen to this. <laughs> yeah, because you haven't seen this series yet. Go watch the series. <laughs> Spoiler alerts galore. Past this point, just letting you know. Probably should have said that in the beginning of the yeah. podcast. My but... bad, guys. But okay, so yeah. who's your favorite character? What's the next question? No, no. <laughs> My favorite, favorite character. characters are a couple. What do you expect from me? Uh, okay, fine. You can mention them twice. We're going to do a quick mention of them once, and then you can elaborate all you want because I know you're going to fangirl whenever you get to go off on them. My favorite characters are Alexander Lightwood and Magnus Bane. Magnus Bane. So Malik, for those that don't know the shipping term for those two, it's Malik. 
or Al- Algamus. That's a book reference, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, I went to the book reference without yeah. meaning to. Okay, that's yeah. Um, so I'll let you go off on that tangent, because I know you want to so bad, because you love Yusuf Malik. <clears throat> Are we talking about couples now? Not yet. Or do you want me to talk? Oh, no, you spoke. Hey, wait a minute. You spoke about what you like about the characters. I can do that, too, without specifically referencing to their couple. Can you? Can you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> uh, interestingly enough, um, if I had to pick. Okay, no. Well, quick question. Let's go back for a moment. If you had to pick between Jason Melior and as in who you liked better, if, there, if, you know, if you had to do like, well, this one just a smidge more, who would you say? Don't make me do this. I can do it. Don't make me do this. I can do it. Meliorn. Really? Yeah. It's okay, Jace. You didn't it's the it's it's the way the character comes across, and that and I didn't. I guess I I haven't read far enough in the books to get Meliorn yet, and he's not in the movie. I know. At all, so it's one of those. He's a new character, and he's a fairy, and it's really really cool. Okay. And he you know he does really 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 good at playing Melee Orn, and it's just, I, I really like the character. Yeah, and that's another, uh, uh, if we, during this, I would like to discuss also as well as, like, what the actors themselves are like in real life versus the kind of character they play, because it's really interesting, specifically um, mentioning Melee Orn and Jade, um, mm-hmm. their differences. But um, if I had to pick one over the other, I would actually say uh, Alec, because, um, and I know that a lot of people have, He's one of their favorite characters because they relate to him a lot, and I relate to him a lot. But with me, from what I've heard with other people, they relate to him a lot because of his sexuality and um, that sort of reference. And I relate to him more because of my upbringing. It's very similar to his. It was constantly listening to my parents and doing what they wanted and all this stuff. So I relate to him a lot as a character. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and he's a very strong character, and he's so used to, like, being in the background, especially in the first part of this first season, that it was really interesting to be able to see the character develop um, more. And especially in season two, it's just, oh my gosh, he has, become, he has come so far. He blossoms. Um, <laughs> he blossoms. <laughs> so that's why I like him. And Magnus, who doesn't like Magnus? I mean, he is a multi-century warlock. He's got a flair for just oh. ugh, everything awesome. I want and those contacts. Really, mm. the, con- the contacts. And, I mean, Harry Shem Jr. is perfect as Magnus. Perfect cast. Um, I have nothing against the movie cast, but um, he is great in the TV role, and he really plays the very gorgeous and wonderful warlock um, in the series. But, yeah, that's part of the reason why the two are my favorite characters. There you go. Woo! We'll get to do the couples in a minute, and you'll understand. You guys will understand why we're like couples, big on couples. Um, okay, we're gonna do another one. Least favorite character. This one you have to answer first. That's rude. <laughs> well, um, I don't want to be a cliche, actually, but here's the thing. It's kind of hard for me because. People could, I could honestly be the cliche and say, oh, well, uh, Valentine is my least favorite character. Because you would expect the bad guy. Yep. Um, in the first season, though, you didn't really get a lot of him. You got him very back in the background. So I think mine varies. Uh, first season, God, I don't think I really had anybody that I hated in the first season, to be honest. I kind of liked all the characters. I didn't like him because he was the bad guy, but that was about it. So I would have to separate it and say in the first season I wasn't a big fan of him, but he wasn't like, oh, I hate this character. And in the second season, I hate to say this because he's really nice. The actor himself is really nice, but I was not a fan of Alder Tree. Oh, second. yes. Except for the last episode. If you guys have not watched episode 10. Uh, you Spoilers. Spoilers. You guys see a new side of him, a very different side. Um, and it's kind of funny because I have we have another friend who is not able to join us in the podcast, but she... Uh, disliked him more than I did, and episode 10, he kind of gave me a new view, and I was like, okay, I can understand his character a little better, and my friend was like, I still don't like him. <laughs> so, you know, but I can't honestly sit here and say, oh, I hate this character with a passion, but I, I was definitely not a fan of Alder uh, Tree. Alder Tree the second season. No. 
I, I'm I with you on Alder Tree, but I've got somebody that I disliked in the first season. Oh, okay, let's hear this. Camille. I didn't, the reason, <laughs> it's not that I hated the character, it's I, it's, I have this, uh, and it's a, a normal loathing towards a character that's, that's meant, you're meant to not like them, mm -hmm. and it's because of, she is that very, you can't touch me, arrogant vampire, and that drives me insane, I'm like, oh, you, just, ooh, it, so I didn't like Camille. The actress did a really, really good job convincing me that that character is not a good character. <laughs> yeah. So I, don't, I mean, Valentine is, yeah, the the epitome of evil throughout the series, but... You're supposed to you're not supposed like him. You're supposed to not like him. So I was trying to find somebody that was not a, you're not supposed to mm -hmm. like, bad, bad guy of the whole series. And let's not mention the fact that she's also a former lover of Magnus, so there's the whole... You know, yeah, that whole scene just irritated the crap out of me. Which one? The yeah. one where she kissed him. Oh, that's episode 13. And Alec walked in. Yeah, that one. That one just not... Mm, mm. It's on a purpose. It's an on purpose act, but dang it. Okay, now we're going to go into favorite couple. Oh, real, hang on, real oh, quick. What, real quick, what, what? Because we mentioned... Uh, just 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 trying to state some more facts um because we did mention the other actors names we did not mention hers uh, her name is caitlin thank caitlin, you plays camille um thank you but just in case anybody's curious about the actors we want to try to mention the actors that play the characters as well and i mean you guys you could check them out on snapchat and twitter i mean they're on everything you can find them and yeah and twitter is so easy to find people because once you add one person it's like would you like to see these suggestions oh sure thanks twitter yeah, it's like I think I added Dom first, and then it just blew up from there. <laughs> I think I actually added one of the writers first. Anyway, there you go. All right, so now, thank you for pulling up Caitlin for me because I couldn't remember it. It was there. I was like, it's 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 there, and it wasn't coming out. That's why I go silent for a minute because I'm frying my brain trying to remember things. Um, favorite couple. Oh, you get to go first. Okay, so I'll go, I'll, I'll go first. Um, you gotta mention the couple and then their couple name, their ship name. Oh, God. Really? She Dang it. This question. She was not prepared for this question. I was not prepared at all. Um, uh, Just be honest. Clary and Jace, the main big couple in the series. Well, yeah, okay, that could be debatable. Because <laughs> there's Alec no Clary and Jace in the second there. season. Yeah. There's no, well, I know there is no. I know there is no Jace and first Clary. First season, yes. What, first season, I think. I can't remember what the heck their couple named. The... Clace. 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 Yes. It's so Clary silly. Who comes up with these names? Man. What oh. kind of a fan are you? <laughs> One that doesn't come up with well, no, I did come up with some names. Actually, but... I think that I actually think the, the names actually began from the book series, so it wasn't something that just when the TV show. Oh, let's get these couples' names. They already had them. From yeah, the I, I know that's a big thing on Tumblr. Is they'll always put the ship names and everything, and I, <laughs> I my brain just doesn't want to comprehend trying to mash names together, and I'm just like, okay. I'll let these guys figure that out for me. But yeah, in case someone was curious, Clary and Jace is Clace. Um, Clace, and season yeah. two, it was very uh, Clyman, which is Clary and Simon. Clary and Simon, um, yeah. That's season two. So I, <laughs> my couple doesn't last a whole season. <laughs> some, people, some people like to joke around, too, and they say Saphiel, which is Simon and Raphael. Um, I can see and that. Some people also like to joke and say uh, Jimon, which is Jason Simon. Jason Simon. And then, of course, there's Malik. Malik. And then there was uh, the second season we had Raphael and Izzy. Yes, which I think they called Izzy Rizzy. L? No, Rizzy. Rizzy? Yeah. It's too close to Rizzo. <laughs> anyway, so why were they your favorite couple in season one? Because they didn't happen in season two. Because they thought they were siblings. It, yeah. See, yeah. Yeah, episode 10. Big reveal. Yeah. Late. 
If you didn't catch that reveal, though, that, that's, that's the key thing. Because it was very subtle. It was not subtle. Valentine was like, you're not my son. <laughs> How was that subtle? Oh, wait. <laughs> I was thinking of the Are movie. Are you forgetting episode 10? <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, in my case brain. you did not see episode 10, Valentine flat out tells Jace, you are not my son. Clary is not your sister. My brain Jocelyn is to, not your mother. My brain went to the movie. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. This girl, this girl, this podcast is us for you. Shadowhunter is the TV show, not Shadowhunter, the uh, previous movie or the book. I know. Which is not even called. It's Movie's not, not even Shadow Hunters. Shadow. It's called uh, City of Bones, The Mortal Instruments. Yes, which is the first book. Wait, yes, it is the first book. It's, in case you guys are curious that? and actually want to read from the first one, which technically it isn't the first one because you have the um, the one about her mom, about Jocelyn, is technically the first series. The if you go by timeline. Well, the Inferno Devices actually takes place 100 years before. Exactly. Okay. Anyways. Yeah. Are they your Going off on other, other things. So, yeah. The, my favorite couple, I don't care. They, 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 they didn't happen in season two. The whole Simon and Clary thing was kind of cute. Because it was the, oh, the best friend finally got his girl. Da, 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 da. The, he's no longer <laughs> friend zoned. <laughs> thing. But my favorite is Jason Clary. Because they're adorable. Um, who's your favorite? Co- well, duh. Malik is your favorite couple. Are you going to go I'm spieling? I'm going to surprise everybody. I was going to be all like, this couple, you'll never guess what my favorite couple is, you guys. I mean, there's only like three couples on the show. And not even. Season one had two main couples. Season two had two main couples and kind of sort of one, like, two episodes. And then it ended... Really- Ended with a love triangle. Ha ha ha. The whole oh. Jay, Simon, we'll Clary. We're going to have to see how that happened. To- By the way, uh, we did not mention this earlier, but season two is not technically over. Uh, yeah. they have, they're have they doing 20 episodes. They've just shown the first 10, so it's season 2A, technically. And season 2B will be premiering on June 5th. Um, on Freeform, but- guys, so... If you look into the fandom, if you look, I'm not delving way into the books and the movie. And well, the movie didn't technically; it only had like a couple of clips. But um, they are. It interests me because even though technically every book series or series similar to that usually has one main pairing, and yes, I mean I will say that Clay is the main pairing. But I like the fact that she tends to give the couples in her books. Um, and in the show, it's happening in the show as well, uh, equal time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <clears throat> to me, I could see Clay as the main couple, and that makes sense because, I mean, the book is the book centered around Clary, and the show centered around her, uh, even though they start to break it down more as the show progresses and they start to bring in more characters and their stories and stuff. Um, but I enjoy Malik for a lot of reasons. Um, it's I enjoy couples that are very opposite. Um, I enjoy how Magnus brings Alec out of his shell, how he helps him realize what it is that he wants, um, and everything that they have to overcome because in their world, you know, Shadowhunters stay with Shadowhunters, especially with Alec coming from a family that has such an important name and such an important background, um, and especially after, like I mentioned earlier, him listening to everything his parents wanted, doing everything his parents wanted, <clears throat> and getting to the point of, almost marrying somebody that he didn't love because he felt it was the right thing to do. Mm. So he's all about duty and everything. That was more of an opportunistic marriage. Yes. And the, one of the biggest reasons that a lot of fans are is because they're an LGBT couple and I am very supportive of the LGBT uh, community or the LGBTQA community um, for a variety of reasons because I grew up very judgmental and I was very, close-minded about people's rights and everything but um they're a very sweet couple they match each other quite well and um harry and matthew do an incredible job of portraying the characters especially in season two to see how far the couple has come in season two because in season one they had little glimpses and little clips with each other and it was kind of more of a building of attraction more of a oh i like this person i like this person but i'm not sure if i should have gone up until episode 12 where you're like oh yeah that's really happening and i like that in season two 
they showed them together more because they're trying to show the audience, hey, this is a couple, hey, they're working towards being together while still having problems because one thing that I really enjoy about the show and any couple in this show is that they never just show them all lovey-dovey happy. They present problems to them that even though it's a fantasy world, it's still realistic to see these couples going through situations and working through them. Yep. She wanted me to spaz on, be like, oh, no, I love that, no, 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 which I do, but. Wait. We spazzed really, really badly at the end of the episode because of just the pure love that Alec and Magnus showed towards no. each other. Okay, no, hold on. I did not spaz. I jumped up and down, screaming my head off, probably alerting my poor dog, and maybe waking some of the neighbors <laughs> when I watched that scene. And it wasn't just because of the I love you. It was because of the fact that Alex thought Magnus was dead. Yep. And you saw just to hear him come out and he's out of breath. He's panicked. I mean, just moments before he saw the down warblers that were dead. He thought mm-hmm. that Magnus, Magnus had died too. And I think that, uh, well, we'll talk about the actors, but I think <coughs> Magnus has come so far um, in the character. And it's just, it was just a truly incredible scene. It was beautiful. And it's funny because most of the people that I currently follow on Twitter are Malik fans. And one of the gifts that I have seen the last few days has been the hug or the kiss. And I have no complaints about my <laughs> being Malik. No complaints whatsoever. Oh, so. no. Definitely. I mean, that they are definitely one of the cutest couples. And it, there was the uh, E! Online had the TV's top couple of 2017 but she's all sh- <laughs> shaking her head at I'm me. I'm not going to go there. There was so much drama behind There that. was a lot of drama. And I realized with the shark thing, there's a little shark icon. You finally, re- you finally figured it out? Yes. That wow. They were all calling us sharks and crap. <laughs> all the fans from Shadowhunters, the Malik fans, weren't they calling us sharks? One the, I think it's one of the biggest fans of the other couple. Or it might have been the actor, actually. I don't remember. Uh, posted a picture. And it was the picture of the other couple, and then it said the sharks are coming for us, referring to the Malik fans. Malik fans, yeah. But what it, was it, in- it came down to, what was the couple's name, Scam? Yeah, they were from a show called, no, I think the, 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 I think the show is actually called Scam. Okay. Yeah, it was that, that couple, it was two, the two guys, I can't remember their names because my brain is just like, no. Um, and then it was Malik, and I mean, you could watch, it was... Like, night and day, like, one moment we would be up there, and then the next moment they would have, like, shot through the roof with the voting, and it was just... Malik didn't end up winning for I a second like year. 54 to, 54 to 46. Yeah, 54 to 46. I mean, we were, like, voting like crazy. I know you and I were both like, ah, vote, vote, vote! And, I mean, and it was just whenever it would turn night here in the United States, it'd become day over there in the UK, and then th- that's when their fans would shoot through the roof. Because it's a Norwegian show. Yeah, so it's one of those... Talking about another show, so... Yeah. yeah. But they, um, they, 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 they I hit my fans. desk. Um, <laughs> and it was actually pretty interesting because Matthew recently had a uh, live uh, Twitter show, and he actually mentioned that, and it was pretty cool because he was saying um, don't worry about them. Don't get snippy with them. If they start to say bad things, just let it go. Because mm-hmm. he didn't want drama, and I don't yeah. blame him. Yeah, no. So, it was sad to see them lose a couple, see Malik lose, but we know, the fans know that we made our best effort, and we got that scene in episode 10, so after that, everybody's like, we don't care about the poll. <laughs> we don't <Yeah>. care. <laughs> we're good. I'm pretty sure as soon as, you know, that show started, we're like, nope, gotta watch Malik over here. Mm-hmm. So, the, and the next one, next question, um, is okay. We did our favorite couple. Now we're gonna do our least favorite couple. Um, I didn't like Rizzy. <laughs> Think you and but, I are both on the same page. Very specific reason because that was like an extremely toxic relationship. Yes. I mean, I enjoyed their bonding, especially in episode nine when they were doing the cooking. That, that was cute. Nine. Oh yeah, it was episode nine. It was nine. Yeah, that was, and you could see like. The, the 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 want and the similar interest in all that I quite enjoyed that but when it came down to it it was a very toxic relationship mm-hmm. so to me I couldn't get behind that because I'm like you can't build a relationship 
based on a toxic situation. And, and this is, and I'm going to elaborate on the, the why it's toxic. Izzy, for those of you don't don't know, is a shadow hunter. Okay, she's Nephilim. And the other half of this this couple we're talking about is Raphael. He is vampire. He is one of the oldest vampires now because Camille has left the scene. Am I correct on that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Actually, no. She said Clave. Magnus sent her to the Clave. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Okay. But, she left at the end of season one. That's what you were thinking. Yeah. But then called her back because she needed to be sent to the Clave because they were going to kill Raphael and his clan if Camille did not show up. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. That's right. That's right. But it ends up where, thanks to Alder Tree, rat bastard, ends up getting Izzy hooked on Yenfen, which is vampire venom. It's a your fort kind of drug thing. And so she ends up having to ask Raphael for help with the whole Yenfen addiction. And he ends up giving in to her. And Nephilim blood is very potent and addictive to vampires. And so it ends up where they are together just because of their addiction. And that's why it's toxic because there's no love there. There's no real love there. It's one needs the other to sustain themselves on their drug addict, their, their drug addiction, which can also then that I think I did compare that to the whole Harley Quinn and Joker couple reference of toxic relationship banter. It is that one could have easily gone that route too. So I, I, that's why we're like, no, no, no Rizzy, no Rizzy. Um, got another one. Haha. Ha, okay. There it is. I have notes because I forget my brain doesn't want to work sometimes. Um, if you could be anything from the series, what would you be? Like, like mortal vampire. Oh, that's easy. Warlock. <laughs> You'd be a warlock. <laughs> nice. Because I mean, I'm already used to kind of, well, I mean, I, I say that, but oh, no, it's true. Because, and if you think about it, this is this is what's kind of cool about, um, not kind of cool, this is what's cool about the show, too, is that you can see, and you can say, oh, well, these people, they're cool because of this, 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 but every one of the creatures that they show on the show, I show on the show, huh? um, <laughs> they all have a weakness. So I like that about, I like that no one's more powerful than someone else. Um, so I can say warlock, and I, you know, people will be like, oh, well, because of the magic and stuff. But at the same time, they're also outcast because every one of them have different marks. Um, and in the show, technically, Magnus only has the one mark when in the book series he has two. But in the show, he has the cat eyes, which is his specific mark. And mm -hmm. then we have, like, Madsy, who's got the gills on her neck. Um, oh, that would be... Oh, my God. That's another favorite character, Madsy. She is too stinking adorable. Okay. Um, I don't, the, the interesting thing is they had Iris, but they never showed oh, what Iris's mark was. So, that's something to think about. But yes, no, She I turned into warlock. a cat. Was that like a magic thing? I think so. I don't think that was a mark, because a mark is something that, like, is, is part of their body and it's just... Technically, from, and again, I have not read all the books, so nobody chew my head off, uh, but from what I understood, Magnus's cat eyes was always a thing. And he has a book. second mark, doesn't he? Yeah, he has no belly button. That's right, no belly button. But in the show, for special effects and stuff, and because Harry's eyes are gorgeous, which you cover them up all the time with. <laughs> girl, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They're very beautiful actors, every one of them. So. Yeah, they are. So what about you? Wow. Oh, oh. hands down, I would be a fae. I'd be fairy. Well, totally would be that. fairy. Oh, for you guys, whoever's listening to this, because I should have known that. What? <laughs> no, I, the whole aspect of the fairy realm, one, it's not really delved into, and in, I've looked on the wiki, I've looked on, I've looked the wiki. at the wiki, the Shadowhunter wiki, all over the place. There's not really a whole lot of delved into in the fae for the Shadowhunter verse. So it leaves it open, completely open. But, I mean, I've, I can draw from other fandoms like Harry Dresden, where they have the Seely and the Unseely courts, I can understand, because they have the same thing. It's like the 
set in law fairy lore, so I'm like, I can kind of, I know what I'm <laughs> stepping into being a fairy. That, and I really like the aspects of the fae, because they're more earthbound creatures, and they're not um, heaven or hell based. No, they're, they are poor, part of the mortal plane, and that they have their own magic set. Which is really, really cool. And I really liked seeing the way gate. The fairy gate that, that Meliorn had thrown him into another plane. That was really awesome. And, you know, and delving into that whole, you're in a whole nother parallel dimension. Don't get caught in it or you'll be lost forever. I'm like, yes, that's how it should work. That's awesome. My brain just likes to go off on random things like that. Just like, you know, watching Doctor Who and Time and Wibbly Wobbly fun jazz do you have any questions in particular miss jen should i <laughs> so should i have come with a chart should i have come with questions i don't know what i was supposed to do I just got <laughs> this. no you're doing good you're doing good no, i was just curious if you had any questions or i mean i can talk about stuff but i don't have questions you don't have any specific questions, questions? <laughs> The end of your questions? Yeah, that was the last one, is what would you would be in the series? Okay, well then I would like to, I don't have questions, but I think that it would be interesting to discuss the actors um, versus like the characters. Um, You're better <clears> with names. Be... <laughs> huh? You are better with names than I am right at this moment. Well, obviously, as fans, we don't know every aspect of the average personal lives, and we shouldn't, because they're still people. Exactly. Um, but I truly believe that the cast that was cast is brilliant. Um, and they're all from different places. They all have different experiences, um, if and I remember correctly. They have their own, like, they, they also, guys, when they're doing these shows, they also have jobs, too, that they do. Everyday jobs. Okay. Entrepreneurs of other things. Well, some I think, yeah, possibly. I don't, I don't know any details about that. I know. Well, I don't know any details either, but I'm only, well. I'm just <laughs> assuming that they actually have jobs outside because you don't. I, I'm... Okay, on a personal level, the only person that I know is still doing stuff on the side. The personal that he actually portrays on his social media is Harry, who plays Magnus, right. because he's also a dancer. And I know that while they were filming, um, I believe last season. Maybe he did it before. He was also doing uh, a red tube, uh, YouTube red original, which was single by thirty. Single by thirty, yeah. Which is hilarious, and I recommend that. That's not part of this show, but I recommend that to anybody who wants to watch it. It's eight episodes on YouTube red, and it is hilarious and amazing. I will put a link down below for you guys to go check it out. I know that recently he got dared to be put on a dance team, and he said yes. So nice. I know that he still does that. Um, I don't know about the others. Um, honestly, and I'm not going to take a guess as to what no, they mean. No, it was just I know an that, assumption. I know that a few of them, I know that Maxim, who plays Jocelyn, she's on another TV show. I know that um, Jade, who plays Meliorn, he's on another TV show. Um, and I want to say that a couple of their people are working on other things. So yeah, they, they obviously have it. But uh, more as to what I was referring to wanting to talk about <laughs> is the different personalities in the, one of the reasons that I enjoy the acting so much in the show, um, personally speaking, season one started out a little shaky, and I don't think it was necessarily because they didn't know what they were doing and stuff, but it was, you're bringing this series, especially after a movie, you're bringing a book series into reality, into sh a TV show. And so I think the first couple of episodes, there's always a bit of hesitation because it's like, well, if we do it this way, how are people going to react? Or, well, if we do it this way... Are people going to like it? But I think once they got into the roles and they got comfortable, it was just amazing after that. Um, but as I was saying, one of the reasons that I mentioned that is because Dominic, who plays Jace, he, when you watch the behind the scenes or his Snapchat or whatever, he's, so hilarious. he's very goofy. <laughs> he's very goofy. He likes to prank people. He, they, they called him one of the interviews, they called him one of the biggest pranksters. And then you... Look at his character, Jason. His character is extremely serious. In the first season, he was cocky, assured, but oh my god, he has gotten so sad in the second season. Yes. And it's just, it's just terrible to see his journey. And on Twitter, they recently asked Dominic um, 
if he could describe Jace in one word in season two, what would it be? And he said sad. Aww. Aww. So much. Because you guys have to understand that compared from season one to season two, season two has gotten a lot darker. Um, it has gotten oh, a lot more serious. Shit. There's not as much, like, I don't want to say humor because there wasn't a lot of humor in season one either, but it has gotten a lot more serious. People have died in season two. There have been huge plot twists. There have been Wait. relationships that have developed more. Would you say that it goes from the transition between season one and season two does a complete 180? Like, there's no ease into this. It's all wham, bam, there you go. <clears throat> well, not technically. Because at the end of season one, Jace went with Valentine. And at the beginning of season two, it shows Jace on the ship. So there's still a transition of, oh, hey, if you guys forgot, Jace willingly went with Valentine. So in season two, it's like, oh, hey, in case you guys forgot, he's still on the ship. I guess it works. For you guys, I watched, I binged, watched this series to catch up, to be able to watch episode 10. But you technically caught up before episode 9. Did I? Yes. Oh, yeah, because I had to wait to 4 o'clock in the morning to watch episode (laughs) 9. So, yeah. You guys, don't don't let her fool you, because (laughs) she's kidding. She didn't have to binge watch the episode. Oh, I she didn't decided, have to. She I decided wanted to. to watch it in two nights. Actually, you spent what? Did you stop at all when you started? No, no, no. Yeah, that's what no, I thought. No, so no. think about it this way, you guys. It's a forty-five minutes because she watched it on Amazon. It's forty-five minutes, twelve episodes, thirteen episodes. Excuse me, thirteen episodes in the first season, and then eight episodes at that point in the second season, because she was waiting for nine. And she did all that in, like, yeah, 36 hours? Yeah. But it also helped that I was also working on a commission at the same time. I multitask very well. So, but while I was binge-watching it, it, I didn't catch, like, the transition wasn't, for me, it felt like it did a complete 180. Because it was all of a sudden, it was a very fast-paced, shit's going down and there's no stopping it. That's how well, it and it's interesting because the fans who started from the first show, first show, first season, excuse me, the fans who started the first season, they started last year when the show came out. So it was last year from January till eight, March or April, I believe, and they had to wait a year oh, yeah. for uh, eight months for the next season. I didn't start. Okay, so real quick little history. Uh, Z started. Because I tried to get her to watch it, and I got her hooked. Um, and then she didn't stop. I did not force her to binge watch in case anybody ever brings it up. I did not force her to binge watch it. <laughs> As for me, <coughs> excuse me, I am in a group that I am not going to name on Facebook that has a lot of male male pairings or gifts. We mentioned stories. We mentioned just TV couples, whatever. Somebody posted a gif of the mallet kiss, which I'm sure anybody who's a fan of the show hears the mallet kiss, and their first thought is the first season, episode 12. Because yep. the episode is literally called Malik. Yep. But <clears throat> I saw I thought a gif. that was cool for them to name a show after a ship. That was epic. Um, and when I saw that gif, my first comment was, who's the couple? And two people commented right away, oh, I love Malik. My curiosity was, this is January, by the way, the beginning of January. So I think uh, two episodes have shown already on uh, TV before I got into it. So <clears throat> they were like, oh, it's Malik, Malik. I'm like, who's Malik? Go to Google, type in Malik. Huge amount of search results. Oh, okay. Look up the couple. Cool, cool. What's this couple from? Book series. Got it, got it. Okay, book series. Six books. Got it, got it. Oh, there's a movie. Oh, cool, cool. Oh, I remember my friend mentioning this movie before. Yeah, she really liked it. Okay, yeah, all right, cool. cool. Wait, that's a TV show? Well, yeah, that has to make sense, a TV show, because that's where the gift came from. Huh, I'm going to look it up. Then I found out it was on Freeform. I did not have cable at that point. So I was like, well, what am I going to do? Hmm, I wonder if Amazon has it. Oh, Amazon has it. First season is only $16. Psh, click. <laughs> and that's where mine started. But I did not binge watch it like a certain someone. I probably watched an episode, maybe two a day. To... Uh, by the time I caught up with the second season on TV, uh, I think they had shown three episodes. But Amazon is actually pretty cool because once the episode premieres, it usually 
gives it to your, you know, if you buy the season pass, you get all future episodes. Which I'll have to find out if I get TV as well. I hope so. Because um, I bought the whole season too. But they usually have it available after 4 in the morning the next day, the next the first day. Yeah. So. To, to be on, honest on this whole bit, I <clears throat> actually fell in love with the storyline because of the movie. When the movie first came out, I actually watched it. How about I think? If I remember correctly, I watched it in theaters. And then my dad well, ended up... Hmm? Go ahead. <laughs> then my, my dad ended up renting it and we watched it again. He rented it from Redbox and I was just like, I'm still hooked on this. All right, cool. I didn't know it was a book. Looked up online. I was like, okay, well, what's this book? Ended up buying the first three books of the Mortal Instruments and started reading it. And then a little accident happened and... I don't know if it was soda or something spilt in it well, during a move. So my books got ruined, so I never got to finish reading the books. So I've been I've been a very big fan of this whole story, uh, the whole series. And I was really super excited whenever they made the announcement they were going to start bringing it to television. But I didn't have access to cable at the time when it started airing, so I didn't get to watch it. And I was like, well, I'll probably won't ever get to see it because I currently don't have the funds to be able to buy it. But thankfully, Jen here was kind enough to let me borrow her Amazon so I could watch it. <laughs> and binge watched it I did because I regret nothing. Absolutely nothing. But I, this series is definitely one of the good ones. I can say that art. It is. Um, and it's also, um, I don't know how long this has been going on, <laughs> the recording. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, because if, if we need to have some final thoughts, I can have some final thoughts. What, uh, are, what are your final thoughts? Okay, well, I personally think that this show is very diverse. Um, I mentioned earlier about the LGBT uh, rights. And Cassandra Clare, who is the original our, our author of these book series, She's very supportive of it, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, she actually based Magnus off of one of her best friends. Um, <clears throat> and he is definitely a fan favorite. Uh, he is in... To delve into a little bit into the books, he is in the, he's in the books, the Mortal Instruments, which are six books. Uh, he is also in the Infernal Devices, which is the prequel series. It takes place about 100 years, I believe, before the Mortal Instruments. And he is also in the books which is in the, um, my goodness, I never remember the name of the books now. I know the first one is called Lady Midnight, but I can't remember what the series is called, and that goes right. to show you. So I'm glad we didn't mention books, because I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, yes, oh, it's the Dark Artifices. Sorry. Dark that Artifices. Is, yes, that is working That right now. I believe two of the books are out, or one is about to come out. And then she's coming out with another trilogy uh, that she's co-writing with someone, and the books actually are all go actually going to center around Magnus for the first time. He's always been a character in the books, but he's never been about him. But the isn't three the, books... Isn't that going <clears> to <throat> be the Bane Chronicles? No, that's actually... That's just the book. That, that's a book called the Bane oh, Chronicles. Which is his story. The... And in the books, he ends up... He, he writes his story down, which is like his history, and then he gives that book to Alec as a guest. Aww. Yes. But no, um... I believe the first one is going to be called The Book of the White, if I remember correctly. Um, nice. Yeah. I think she's is. typing it up to look it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys um, something that, you know, I don't know about because I'm going to be like, hey, you guys. Okay. But here's the thing her other series, her other book series, have always been YA books, which is young adult books. Uh, the Magnus books that are the, the books that are being centered on Magnus that are coming up. The first one comes out in November. They're actually going to be an adult series. Okay. Um, so she's going to have a little more freedom to write a little. I don't know if I want to say darker, um, but a little more intense than like a YA book. Um, right. The TV series itself is TV fourteen, so it's not exactly for kids either. Excuse me, <clears throat> but. Uh, if I remember correctly, to fangirl a little bit from what I'm hearing, again, um, yeah, it doesn't have the first book. Let's see. 
I was trying to see. I, I thought they had a title, and it probably does, but I don't want to spend too much time just trying to look for it and be like, oh, you know, I don't remember. Reveals <laughs> uh, <coughs> titles. Oh, wait, is that it? <laughs> anyway, um, the rumors are between the fans and from what she said, in the first book that's coming up in November, it's supposed to have Alec and Magnus's first time. Aww. They write about that in the YA books, Mortal Instruments, because it's like, you know, <laughs> it's only a certain, there's only a certain uh, length someone can go when it's a, a certain genre. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The series will be called The Eldest Curses. Uh, so it is the lost book of the white is the first one that's coming out in November. The black volume of the dead is the second one. And the red scrolls of magic is going to be a third one. But when she is done with that, she is done with the mortal instruments. The shadow. That whole War. verse. Yes. She still writes other books, um, but she is going to be done with it after that. Um, so it'll be interesting because one thing I'm going back to the show and my final thoughts, um, the show is based on the books. Uh, the show does have characters from the books. They have pairings from the books, et cetera, et cetera. But it is not a book by book, word by word. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not the same. So for a lot of people, if you're a book fan and you get into the series, prepare to find things different from the books. Because even though it's based on it, it's still a TV series. And they've interviewed uh, the actors, and the actors have flat out said, no, it's not exactly like the books, because then you know what to expect. Yep. Like, uh, I think the, the, there was a couple of people that died in the series that nobody, everybody was like, they didn't die. Yeah. So, you know, they changed it up. Um, personally, I like that they keep the pairings. Uh, I like that they have the similar, like, Malik is a huge pairing, and the interesting thing is that when she was, when they mentioned wanting to do the TV show, uh, she flat out told them Malik is a very important couple. Um, what they represent is very important, and you have to have them in the show. And they were like, "Well, of course we're going to have it in the show." <laughs> so um, I quite enjoy it. I definitely have found a lot of similarities, and to be honest, the show came at a time that I really needed it. Um, I've been going through a lot lately, health, stress, everything. Typical for any human being, but it seems to be just be intensified for me. And the irony of the timing of me finding the show really helped. So I personally recommend it to everyone. Uh, I'm not going to make anyone binge watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, if you guys are new at it and you're somehow listening to this, I would at least give... I'd say at least give the first three episodes a chance. If you don't like it, okay, you're lost. But uh, and we talk about that a lot on our show on on Nocturnal Nerds. Is we at least give it to the third episode. Try try doing that that guys. To, if you can watch these series that we talk about on here, at least to the third episode, you you can form your opinion by then at least. But definitely give it a shot. Um, it is a very diverse show. It has a lot of sexualities. Um, to this point, they've actually had a gay character, a free-willing bisexual, <laughs> a asexual, and then, of course, straight people. Um, so I like the diversity. The they actors... Had, they had a polyamorous, too, didn't they? <laughs> the other shadow hunter... I can't remember his name. He was the one that watched over Magnus and made him basically beat his ass because he was like you're not going to be able to save him oh Raj Raj yeah because he was like that... oh, the <laughs> signing up the threesome in episode 8 actually. yeah <laughs> where he's oh, like yeah, I was about to have a nice setup with a threesome and you ruined it I was like what I didn't, I didn't remember that yeah Raj uh, poor Raj episode 3 he deserved it though I'm sorry you don't get in Magnus's face like you need to get out <laughs> you're going to say that to a warlock really like is this a warlock who's like love his life okay Anyway, the point is that um, I like it. I embrace the diversity. I enjoy that the cast is also very diverse. They come from different places, different ages, different backgrounds. Like I've said, and I know it's me fangirling, but I truly believe they chose an incredible cast. Um, they did. 
I don't want to say I have a personal opinion over this and blah, blah. I personally like season 2A so far better than the first season if I had to pick. Um, but both seasons are incredible. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to season 2B because we just got a glimpse at Sebastian. <clears throat> Spoiler alert for anybody who doesn't know. Yep. Um, and I was totally lost on that bit. I know I was. Yeah. Yeah, a lot so of people. It's like who the who is that? Why does he have this? Song? It's funny. What the yeah, it's funny because Twitter was blowing up because they were like, book fans say, "Who's this person?" Oh, I know who that is. TV show fans say, "Who's this person?" I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so technically, because technically, if you're not a book fan, you don't know who he is. Right. Uh, even though he was cast, uh, Will Tudor is actually cast as Sebastian. Um, they announced it a while back, so a lot of people were like, "Oh, cool!" It's better than really, you know. And some people were like, "Who?" Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't. I didn't catch that. Being a book fan gives you more of a glimpse into the world of the TV show. Um, personally, I think you can watch it without reading the books. I mean, that's kind of what we did. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, because of the interest in the show, I am definitely going to start on the books because now I'm like, well, now I want to read them. Yep. So those are my final thoughts. I think the show is incredible. I think you should definitely give it a chance. And I think so far I've been very fortunate in my Twitter finds to find some incredible fans that are super nice. It is a very accepting uh, community that we found. And as we mentioned with the actors in social media, obviously they can't answer every fan because there's a lot of fans. But they're very kind. They're always doing their best. Anytime there's been an episode, they get on to live tweet. They try to do live podcast, not podcast. They try to do live, what is it called? Snapchats and uh, uh, oh, Periscope. Yeah, Periscope. Yeah, Periscope. They try to do the Twitter uh, chat. They try to do Instagram. Facebook they try Live. Very best because they know that it's important not only to, you know, represent, perhaps represent the character that you have, but also to show the fans that, hey, we appreciate you guys mm -hmm. and we're going to keep doing it because they love what they do. You can honestly tell when you watch the behind the scenes and everything, you can tell if they love what they do. Oh, yeah. Also, if anybody's curious, um, last season, they did a lot of this person takes over, this person takes over, and it was a lot of, uh, they basically sat down on Instagram, Periscope, whichever, and chatted with the fans. Well, in case anyone has not seen it, Harry's was really, really funny. Oh, that uh, was hilarious. You look, up, you look up Harry takes over, something like that, uh, maybe I'll, I'll send it to Z, I'll send you the link, because that one specifically was really funny. Because the other uh, actors were incredible, don't get me wrong, and they were great, but Harry actually channeled uh, Magnus. Magnus. And he had him chatting. Like, so that was that was unique and it was different. I'll and post it. A, I'll, I'll make sure I'll post a link to that video down below for you guys too. But they're very friendly, and um, so far, like I said, it's just it has been an incredible experience, and I am very happy to be part of the fandom. I am too. It has been really epic. Just. The, I'm a very, very big because of the background that I, you know, I've grew up in. I've always been interested in mythology and everything, and they bring a lot of that mythology in. I really like. Well, I know I I joke about it a whole lot, and I I mean kudos to Twilight, but I'm so glad the vampires don't sparkle. <laughs> the only sparkle you get in the show is the glitter coming from that makeup, and that doesn't bother me one bit. And he does not sparkle in the sun, so I'm good. <laughs> They can't even stand in the sun. I really liked it that they can't say uh, they couldn't say God. Oh, <laughs> um, but also uh, in case anybody, sorry, in case one more last thing, in case anybody is curious, the kisses on that show are really hot too. So yeah, that's yeah the kisses are <laughs> kisses yeah. are wow. Um, the two? Uh, huh? It's especially season two. Especially season two. Yeah the 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 aspect that they do with the werewolves is really amazing. Because they do the eye change, and then they're actual wolf wolves, and not the like um, the tracking and everything. Yeah, it, it's really, really awesome. It's yeah, the alpha fight where Luke fought the alpha, and oh my god, that was so cool to see that aspect. Because that's one that's never covered. That I've never seen it covered in any other yeah. uh, fandom storyline. And, and and. You know, I need you to bring in the Fae, which they're not the pretty little Tinker Bell bottle fairy things. They're actual. They look more like elves. But that's because they don't have the wings, but I can understand it. 
that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I'm rambling because I just, so many things I'm like, ah, I can relate to a lot of them because I'm really, really into <clears throat> the mythology. And I really can't wait till they bring in, I call her Titania. I know that's probably not her name. That's not really her name because they only call her the uh, Queen of the Seely Court. Mm -hmm. That'd be really cool to see her brought in. Because I know I, I read spoiler but from the wiki that they end up going to the fairy realm and meeting her. Yeah, actually, according to the Shadowhunters wiki, apparently they just referred, this Queen of the Seely Court referred to as uh, the Seely Queen. The Seely Queen, yeah. Which, for those that don't know the fairy <laughs> lore, her name is Titania. And, you know, you go into fairy tale, Titania that's used a lot in the fairy lore um but i really do recommend this series guys if you haven't watched it go watch it if you haven't read the books go read the books uh give the movie a shot too because they did really good with the the movie because you only cram so much of one yeah, three books into it six books no it was just supposed to be the first book it's supposed to be the oh it was Oh yeah, yeah. City Bones. Ha, 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 ha. See, I'm already. Mm. But no, seriously, you guys should go watch it. Um, especially because like, it's it's a good journey. You get to see the journey of not only the characters but the actors from the first season to the second season. And honestly, the winter finale that just happened was absolutely incredible. Um, personally, I was really relieved because in episode nine, Malik had a huge fight over the whole Izzy and Raphael thing. Anyway, because Alec was being a big brother. Because I mean, I don't blame him. Oh yeah. Um, that fight was awesome. That was amazing. But, uh, episode 10, so much happened in it. So many characters were involved. There was just such incredible acting. So I definitely, like I said earlier, and like she said, if you have, just try three episodes because it is absolutely incredible and wonderful. And maybe someday we can talk about each episode individually because I see that a lot on YouTube. But if we start now, this will be a four-hour podcast. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> we're not going to try to delve into that Those one. Those <laughs> are my thoughts. Those are my final thoughts for real because I apparently keep interrupting because I'm like, oh, wait, I want to mention this. <laughs> but, so yeah, that was sh the Shadowhunters, guys, Shadowhunters. I will link down the Twitter, the Facebook, everything. I will give you all the links that I can the so you guys video. can go check it out. Huh? The YouTube video of Harry taking over. The YouTube video of Harry taking over. Um... Just there's so many different outlets that you can check these guys out on. And definitely looking forward to June 5th, I swear. And it's going to be 8, 7 central, right? I believe so. Yes, it'll still yeah. be the same time. But this time they're going to have a new partner in crime. I think it's Stitchers after them. This Stitchers time. after them. Yeah. And so, yeah, get caught up. Season B, the season 2B is going to be 10 more episodes. 10 then episodes. Then who knows what's going to happen. Then they're already doing the filming for it. I mean, whenever they go live on Twitter and everything, then they're they're doing the filming, and so they're like, "We're we're in the middle of working, but we're gonna stop and I'm gonna sit here and talk to you guys before I have to go do my scene." And it's so pretty. Yeah. It's, that's really uh, epic. When they did the live uh, tweet for episode ten <coughs> slash Snapchat slash Facebook live, uh, Matthew and uh, Kat were out because they were filming together, but they're actually filming until May. So they're actually filming, like, right up until June. Well, I mean, filming the month before June uh, with season 2B. And hopefully sometime soon, if they don't announce in 2B, they'll let us know if we're going to get a third season or not. Yep. Which, based on the views, the audience, and everything, I really think we will, but we we'll just have to wait and find out. The more that they get viewed, the more that they stay on. And hopefully, if for some horrible reason, they don't get a season 3. They don't end season 2B like they did a season 1. <laughs> no we'll cliffhangers. No cliffhangers. Exactly. Oh, Oh. Because season but, 2A, they warned there was going to be a huge cliffhanger. And it was a cliffhanger, but it wasn't like... <gasps> kind of cliffhanger. It was a so. good way to end the, the season. Yeah. At least. The first, the first half of the season. <laughs> it, it, that was a good that was a good end for that one. That was a good finale. That was really cool. But thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Jen, for joining me and geeking out in some Shadow Hunters. <laughs> Sure, it was quite fun, and I do hope that uh, people give it a try. They haven't, and those who have, go rewatch it. I'm going to be rewatching it for the next three months. So, yeah, you know. she's going to be spamming my Facebook messenger with more gifts and 
clips and I'm not complaining. Lord knows I'm not complaining. It's a good <clears throat> distraction. But spam all over. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for listening in. Um thank you. Uh definitely check out everything that I'm gonna put down below. And I'm also haha <laughs> sneaky here going to be updating this video at some point once she gets her Instagram put up. She is an amazing photographer. My lovely little Jen here. So I will put a link to her Instagram once she gets that up and going. So you guys give her some love. Check her out. But anyways, tune in uh, next week. I'm going to try to keep this going. I know I've been gone for a while. A lot of sickness has happened. But I'm better. I'm getting better. So... Thank you guys again. Thank you so much for your support. I've got a lot of cons coming up and hopefully a lot more content for you guys. Until then, ciao, matane.